I'm going to show you the hidden side of Tokyo that most tourists don't visit. I'll take you beyond Tokyo's popular tourist sites, where local authentic culture thrives, and the pace of life is slightly slower. So here are five hidden spots to help you beat the crowds and discover the other side of Tokyo. You need to add these unique neighborhoods to your next Tokyo itinerary. Number five, Monzen Nakacho. The best way to get there is by using the Hibiya line and changing onto the Tozai line or by using the Ginza line and then changing onto the Oedo line. Welcome to Monzen Nakacho which is actually a town that was built around a temple here in Tokyo, away from the crowds, with less visitors coming here. It's a great escape and a great way of seeing some more local Tokyo life. This alley is steeped in history and offers Showa era ambience that characterizes this charming area. Sit back and browse the many local stores that line the streets or simply take a stroll and enjoy the atmosphere. My tip for this area is to sample local sake at cozy zakayas like I did. I love places like this um, <laughs> where you can literally have a choice of all sorts of Japanese sake and alcohol by the sake cup, I guess it is. So if you want to try sake, this is a little bit of an interesting concept. You can choose your sake and you can um, choose your, the size of the glass and pay by glass and the selection is immense. There are all sorts of sakes, you'll be able to find the one that suits you the best. This is what I like about coming to places like this. <laughs> Not too many tourists, pretty nice away from the crowds. Monzen Nakacho is situated near the Tomioka Hachimangu Shrine, which is the largest of its type in Tokyo and worth visiting as it's said that visiting brings good fortune in business and health. And most importantly, discover a part of Tokyo less visited by tourists or even covered in other guides. Number four, Yanaka Ginza. Out of the list, this street and area is certainly up and coming, but still lacks the tourist crowds. And the easiest way of getting there is by using the Yamanote line and getting out at Nipori Station, which is a five minute walk from Yanaka Ginza. In this metropolis of a city that is Tokyo, everybody seems to go to Akihabara, Shibuya, Shinjuku, etc. But you can escape to a place like this, Yanaka Ginza, where you'll find a more authentic, quieter, local area. This is known as Tokyo's old shopping street. Let's go. This street is a living piece of history. Having miraculously survived the bombings of World War II, many of the shops here have been run by the same families for generations preserving a slice of old Tokyo. It's also a great place to find cheap, used, but in good condition yukatas and browse the many stores at a slower pace. As you wander, keep an eye out for the many cat-themed items, a nod to the area's feline residents who have become local celebrities in their own right. I always recommend exploring the surrounding area, including its own Buddha statue and one of Tokyo's largest graveyards too. Number three, Togoshi Ginza. This street is another example of local Tokyo life blending the old with the new. If using the Yamanote line, you'll need to make a change at Gotanda Station and get onto the Asakusa line to then head to Togoshi Station, which is only a few minutes walk from the street. So you thought there was only one Ginza in Tokyo? Well, this is Togoshi Ginza, a shopping street which is 1.3 kilometers long the longest shopping street in Tokyo, very uniquely local. And if you want to have a little bit of a slice of life and see what it's all about here in Tokyo, this is the place to explore. Definitely far away from the tourist crowds with local stores, cafeterias, izakayas, pharmacies, and plenty to eat. Best of all, escape the tourist crowds. An interesting fact is that Togoshi Ginza is a hub for Shotengai culture representing the traditional shopping districts of Japan. As you wander, you'll find a fascinating array of small boutiques, cafes, and other hidden treasures waiting to be discovered. Although not glamorous like Ginza, the appeal is definitely in how quaint it is and how it gives you a sense of what shopping in a very local Japanese street might be like. 
Okay, we're at the halfway mark, getting to my ultimate favorite location from the list, so keep on watching. But before we get there, I'm gonna ask you to consider subscribing and liking. It really will help the channel grow and help me continue making content. Anyway, let's get back to those hidden gems. Number two, Shiba Mata. This district became popular as a result of a film series. And although it's a little trickier to get to, as you'll need to navigate onto the Keisei Kanamachi line via either the Joban, Shioda or Asakusa line. But once arriving, you'll be rewarded with a quaint area that really feels that you've left the city behind. I visited with my friend who lives in Tokyo but had never been. I recommend strolling the beautiful streets with traditional buildings and many food vendors and souvenir stores and exploring Tai Shakuten Temple with its exquisite wood carvings. This really is a hidden gem often overlooked by tourists and potentially a good alternative to Tokyo's Asakusa tourist crowds. Get a sense of the olden time Tokyo and don't forget to sample some of the local sweets that have been loved for generations. And my number one is Suna Machi Ginza. This is one of the favorites amongst locals and it's become one of my favorite areas in Tokyo too. During two hours of walking around the area, I only encountered a handful of Western tourists. This top place to beat the crowds might be a little bit hard to get to if you're planning to use a train or the subway, with Minami Sunamachi and Ojima Station being the closest, but yet still around a 20 minute walk away. Here at Sunamachi Ginza Dori, you'll find a slice of life of what local Tokyo people might get up to. This hidden gem of a street is lined with so many street vendors and I'm not talking about those trendy Harajuku tourist street food rainbow cheese. I'm talking about what locals might purchase themselves. So if you want to explore what locals might get up to and if you want to explore some local street food, this is a place for you. Check it out. This area is known for its community spirit, where shopkeepers and residents share a close bond. And you don't want to miss the tempura shops here. These establishments are famed for serving some of the city's best tempura, crispy and fresh, often made in front of you. It's a perfect snack as you absorb the lively yet laid back atmosphere of the neighborhood. But there's so much more than just tempura. これ I bumped into some foreigners living in Tokyo and this is what they had to say. Why would you recommend like foreigners come to the street specifically? Um, it's more of uh, how locals live here in Japan. It's like away from all the you know tourist hustle and bustle. So if you come here, you can see how the locals live their daily life, how like you know they buy the things here, like the supermarket across and all. It's like you know completely how local people used to do before the westernization of Japan, you know, happened to take place. So I think this yeah actually gives you a glimpse of how local people live and also like you can see a lot of old people living here so it's like these people have not had the influence of the west yet so they are still trying to i think lead their lives if you come here there are a lot of places that take only cash like you know this place has recently started to take pay pay but they don't take anything except from the cash except any other modes of payment and yeah like you know you can see the tempura you can see you you can see like you know all the local dishes, not something like pizza or something like that you can find here. Mm. So yeah. yeah, I think this is a must. It's easy to see why I continue to eat my way through the streets. <laughs> you know what a really great thing about this location so far that I've really liked? Is that not only is there some really interesting street food that I've never had myself, <laughs> like this um, pork and vegetable sort of pancake, but that there are little areas set up with tables and chairs where you can sit down and eat, which is such a godsend because there are so many places in Tokyo that I've been to that require you to stand next to a bin, <laughs> eat your food and then dispose of it in the same location. This is a godsend. And obviously one of the great things about traveling to areas that are more local 
is you get the little bit of the Inaka, Japanese countryside experience with people being super friendly, super welcoming and being really curious about what you're doing, which is something that is not the case when you go to the hyper-focused tourist areas in Tokyo, which really want you to be quick and leave as quickly as possible so that they can um, serve other tourist customers. So there you have it, a journey through Tokyo's hidden gems where the charm of everyday life unfolds. These neighborhoods, each with their own unique characters and stories, offer an authentic experience of what the city is like without the tourist masses. I hope these insights encourage you to explore these lesser paths and enjoy Tokyo from a different perspective. And surprisingly, you don't need to go that far to beat the tourist crowds. Anyway, I hope you've been inspired and if you have, then please subscribe and like to help the channel grow so that I can continue making more content like this. It only takes a few moments and it's the ultimate form of appreciation. And if you want to support even further, then why not consider becoming a patron, use the PayPal link or super thanks. And if you're looking for a pocket Wi-Fi or a data SIM, then why not consider using my affiliate link with Sakura Mobile for a product that is trusted by many people in the Ninja Monkey community. I'll receive a small commission at no extra cost to you and you be helping the channel. For more casual content, check out my second channel, The Happy Gaijin. Stay positive, keep exploring and be a happy Gaijin. See you soon. Bye. Why not consider watching one of my other videos and keep the adventure going? For example, this 14 things that you will hate about traveling in Japan. Do you agree with me? I don't know. Check it out.